In this tutorial, what we're going to do is form a triptych, but use just one photograph. And we're going to splice it up into three different parts, separate it onto a bigger canvas. So we're going to start with this picture here, and I'm going to make sure that my rulers are showing. So again, view rulers. And then I'm going to make sure they're on PICAS because what I'm going to do is eventually put this into InDesign, which works in PICAS, and I want to use the same measurement so it's a little easier for me to figure out how big to make the document. <coughs> so I'm set to go. The first thing I need to do is create more canvas size. Now, often people forget this, and it's pretty important because uh, I want each individual part of the picture to be on its own layer with no other color on it. And the way Photoshop works is that when it opens up a photograph, it opens up a layer called background in which the picture is on and it locks it. And if it's locked, then if I do erase something, it will erase, but it will replace it with whatever color is in the background color. So I want to make sure I unlock it. I just double click on it and this is going to end up being my center picture so I'm just going to name it center spell it right and I'm going to click OK and what that does is it renames the layer and it unlocks it because it is no longer the background layer and by default a background layer in Photoshop is locked so now when I erase I get transparency in behind it so that will help me the next step is to give myself more space to work. Now, if I go to image size and increase the image size, I'll have more space, but it will still will be filled with the picture. So Photoshop has this feature called canvas size, which will allow me to increase the canvas size. So right now I'm at 272 by 204. I'm going to increase that to 350 and maybe something like 250. So I'll have a more width and more height on either side. Now there's four spots that I can um, anchor the picture. I want to keep the picture in the exact center. If I click on this button, it will anchor the picture in the top left and I'll have more space to work in the bottom of the picture and the side of the picture and that's where these empty squares are. So I'll just show you. It's not what I want so I will undo that and go image canvas size and I'm going to increase it to 350 and 250 and I'm going to anchor it in the center so I have that. Now I have to use the scroll bars to see everything so what I'm going to do is go to my magnifying glass and I'm going to go to fit screen so I can see every part of the picture. So I uh, might want a little bit more on the width. If um, I think I will. I'm going to go and increase it a little bit more. I'm happy with the top, but I'm just going to go to 380 and click OK. Now, the width was 272 pikas of the picture. And if you forget to remember that number, what you can do is go back to your history. And the history button is right here. And that basically allows you to go through all the different parts of your, your change in your Photoshop document. So if I go back to my original and I go image, image size, I'm going to remember that it's 272 pikas and write that down. Because I'm going to need to do a little bit of math, divide by three, divide this picture up into equal parts and I only want to divide up the picture itself. Now as long as I don't do anything, I can then go forward in my history to my increase in the canvas size. And I think, oh, interesting, oh, never mind. I was covering it up. It looked a little off there. So I've got equal parts on either side. Now the third step will be to drag this guideline down to the top and snap it and this will allow me to move things over and then I'm going to drag guidelines out as well and I'm going to go to let's start with 10 well maybe a little, let's go to 15 can always change it later now if it's a little hard to get to 15 exactly 
what you can do is zoom in. And then go to your move tool and it'll be a little easier when you're zoomed in to go to 15. And I'm going to go to this side and I was at 380. So 380 minus 15 is 365. So I'm going to go down to 365. And then I'll go back and fit it on the screen. So now I have my guidelines. That just gives me equal distance from the edge on either side. So when I move pictures over, it will be there. Now, here's the process that you're going to go through. Step four is selecting different parts of your picture. Now, I want transparency there because if I had a color there, if I had left it locked, then I would be copying the color over as well in part. So what I'm going to do is just drag a marquee and I'm going to go, you don't have to, you can try and get it right to the top and bottom, but I'm going to go a little bit above because it doesn't really matter because there's nothing else there. I'm just going to draw a rectangular marquee. This is a selection tool that just allows you to select part of the picture and then move it or delete it or cut it onto another layer. So 272 is the exact width of my picture. So I'm going to go to my calculator and go 272 divided by 3 equals 90.66. So I'm going to round that to 90.6. I'm going to round it down um, because I, what I'm going to do is cut the edges off on either side and they'll be exactly 90.6. The center one will be just a touch bigger. That's okay. In fact, I could probably do 90.66 and be really exact. So I think that's what I'll do. So 90.66 is what my measurement will be. And I need to resize this to make sure that this selection tool is exactly 90.66. So the way that I do that is I go to Select, Transform Selection. So I draw the selection. And up here, I've got a width and a height of 100%. And I can increase and decrease that. But it's in percentage, and I want it to be in picas. So what I actually have to do is type in 90.66. It's still percent, so I'm going to type in pica. And what that'll do is it'll convert the marquee measurement to picas. Now you'll notice the height didn't change. That's because this button here is not checked. <clears throat> this button links the width and height. So if I change the width, the height will change with it as well. I don't want that, so I left it unlinked here. Then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to move this marquee and, I, and drawing it high and low above the picture just gives me a little bit of room to move it around. And I'm going to snap it right to the edge of the document. And if I zoom way in, I can check and make sure, yes, it's exactly there. So, uh, let's, okay. Once I've satisfied with that, what I have to do is click on the check mark to accept the change in transforming the selection. This cancels it. So I'm going to click the check mark and I'm going to go back to fit screen because I had zoomed way in. So what I've done now is selected one third of my picture. The next step, step five, is to cut this pit part off and put it on its own layer. So I could do edit, cut, edit, paste, create a layer by itself, but there's a really handy feature here under the layers palette or the layers uh, menu. And that is create a new layer and do that by cutting what I've selected off the center layer and putting it on its own layer. You won't notice a change in the picture, but in fact, when I click on this eye, that hides that layer, and that hides the center layer, and that's one third of the picture. So I've now separated my picture into two different parts. I'm gonna rename this one left. 
So that process again, uh, because we have to do it one more time. Now the tricky part here is don't stay clicked on the left layer, because if I drag a selection and I go layer, new layer via cut, it will tell me there's nothing there. That's because I'm on the left layer and when I hide that, there is nothing on the left layer, just the picture over here. So I'm going to drag my marquee, step one. I'm going to go to select, transform selection, step two. I'm pretty close. I'm going to type in 90.66. Now it remembers that it's pica. So you can see it'll say pica up there. And I remember I didn't check this. So it's not going to change the height. And then I'm going to drag it over and snap it right to the edge. I'm going to hit the check mark to keep it. And then I go layer, new, layer via cut. Now, center layer. Layer, new, layer via cut. That's the one thing I forget most of the time is being on the right layer. But Photoshop will remind you. So I'm going to rename this one right. So I now have three separate layers. With the center one just being a smidgen bigger than the other two. But the left and the right are identical, so that gives it some symmetry. Now, what I'm going to do is move these layers over. So I'm going to go to my Move tool up here, and I'm going to click on the, the left layer. And I'm going to move it over, and there's my guideline. So they'll snap to there and snap to there. I'm going to go to the right layer. I'm going to move this over. Now, I have to decide if that's too much space. I think it is. There's very little space there on either side and lots in the middle. So what I'm going to do is actually move those guidelines over. So I use the move tool, I grab the guideline and I'm going to move it over to 30. Okay, I'm going to need to zoom in a bit here. And then this one was 380. 380 minus 30 is 350. Then I will go to the Move tool, and I'm on the right layer, so I'll move that over. Move that over. Go here, Fit Screen. I'd say that's a little bit more balanced. So I've got my triptych. Now all I have to do is put a background color in. So what I'm going to do actually is create another layer. And I'm going to drag it down. I'll rename it. I'm just going to type in BG for background. And then what I'm going to do is choose a color from this document to put in there. So I'm going to go to my eyedropper and yeah, that color might work. We'll try it out. So what I do is I choose the color that way. So I have some matching going on in my document. I go to my background layer, click on it, make sure it's blue. And I have a background. Then to give it a little bit more separation, what I'm going to do is put a layer style on. So I'm going to go to uh, layer a layer style of blending options. I can choose the one I want there. The other thing I can do is simply click on my left layer and double click and I choose from there as well. So I've got the same options, the same window coming up from two different locations. So I'm going to put a stroke around it. I can check it to stroke it but in order to edit it I click on it so it turns blue and I can choose the size and I'm going to do inside as it makes it square. I prefer that. Um, you can try one of these different modes here. Uh, some of them really won't change it a lot, but well, that changed it a lot. 
Um, you, you can try some of those out. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to go with a dark blue, I think. It's not very dark. That one might work. Picked it from the picture again. And I'm going to do a texture emboss. So let's change the size a bit. Soften it. And I st stay with a chisel soft. And I think I'm going to pick a blue color as well. Let's maybe a little lighter. Let's go up a bit. Right. Once I'm happy with it, um, you've got a bunch of different ones here you can use. There's inner shadow and outer glow. Um, that outer glow, let's see. Sometimes they cover each other up. I'm not seeing much there. Size, let's try. There it goes. That's kind of a neat effect. Um, maybe I'll go with a blue. And so it just kind of gives it a ragged edge there. Interesting. So once I'm happy with it, I click OK. And then what I can do is copy that. So I go layer, layer style. There's all the ones that I chose. They're also listed way over here. And I'm going to copy that layer style. And I'm going to go and I can click on actually both of them. If I hold shift down, I can click on the top one and then the bottom one. And then I can go layer, layer style, paste. And it will put them both on those layers at the same time. So there I have a triptych made from one pitcher. Cut up to give it some separation. A little unique perspective on the photograph. And you want to try and pick a picture that has some maybe some natural three parts to it, like the tree uh, trunks and then the view in between them. And there's your one picture triptych.